Hi, welcome to my channel, Ellen's DIYs, where I like to do everything on a budget. I've done a piece of everything over the years. DIYs, making over furniture, decorating, anything I can get my hands on. So, if you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get on with this project. Hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a cushion cover. It's really simple. You can use your sewing machine or fabric glue, it works both ways. This is the cushion cover I'm going to copy. I wanted to have an envelope back. So what I've done is I've measured this one, which is 18 by 19. This is the material I'm going to use. This comes from Ikea. Um, and I'm just using up scraps that I've had to finish this off. So basically what I've done, I want this to be like an Oxford pillow slip, but it'll have the edges going over so I've measured an extra inch right round you see here an extra inch right round and I want to put something over the top of this to to mute down the colours and basically these are completely the exact same as what I've done with my curtains now this has been a neck curtain or a Oil cutting that I've cut down. This came from the range. It's got a shimmer to it. A foil panel. So basically, I'm going to. I have cut the back, and I've cut the back in two. And you, I want to make it maybe three to four inches longer in both of these panels. So the big panel I cut out is 21. This is one underneath. Both of these two are 21. This is 11 and a half. And this one is 15. I had to patch this because it was all the material I had. But basically you want them to fold over like this. And then you can just take some pins and pin it because you're going to want to make sure everything is matching up. Basically, I'm going to pin the three pieces together with the boil in the middle so that when I sew it, it'll be easier. Put a wee pin here just because these are separate pieces. It'll look like this. And then I'm going to sew the three of them together right round the edge. I'm not too worried about the bits that are overlapping because they can all be trimmed off near the end. If you're worried about sewing, you can always put a piece of tape and you can get it opened. I'm just using electrical tape here to um, that bit. And that'll tell you where you want to start sewing. Because this is going to be an inside thing, I'm only going to be sewing maybe half an inch. So you put your tape right next to where you think you want it to be. And you can sew right round. And it'll be fine. Right, I'll finish sewing around this and then I'll come back and let you see what I'm doing next. So once you've sewed it all round, at this point I would take all these edges off. Normally if you weren't doing an extra inch you could overlock a lot of this and you would be finished. But because I want to put the extra bit detail on the ends, um, you better to cut your corners off. But I'm going to iron it and then sort it first. Look 
like this. And if you have bigger pillows, it would fit in this fine. I'm going to iron this first. Flatten all the seams. Right, I have ironed this flat and I've cut my corners off. I'm just, that means you can put the corners right through when they come up. Make sure you really put them all in. Make it as flat as you can again. And now I'm just going to sew a seam round for a whole inch. And to do that, I need to have my tape moved over a wee tiny bit. So generally, I would put this in thinking where I want, and then I would. Mark the tape exactly there so that it knows. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm just going to sew around it. Just going to check my measurements. So I take it from the needle to there, it's about an inch. I probably want it to be a wee tiny bit bigger, so maybe an inch and a half. An inch and a quarter would be fine. And I'm just going to sew. Make sure that everything's lying flat as you go. So you know where you're stopping. Always stop with the needle one. Now, if you were using fabric glue, you would just put it inside a line down, mark the line, and then leave it till it dries. I'll finish. This is what it looks like when it's finished. You've got a seam here. And this is the back. I had to patch this because IKEA's closed and I don't have any more material. So it'll be like a wee envelope that goes in there. And I'll show you that all the roughness that was inside is now, is now gone. It's all sewed inside. And I've made three of them. Two of them were from the couch. That's what they look like on the couch. The extra wee bit just stands out, and they actually it's exactly the same as what I've done in my living room curtains. This is just material, and then the materials from IKEA, and this boil was from the range, and I just sewed them together at the top. These cost me nothing to make because I had the material extra and the extra boil, so all in all, it was only pennies. But it looks like this at the back. And some flowery materials actually really nice. Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a cushion cover with just one piece of material. What I have done is I've used an old cushion cover for my template. And I've measured it out. This is actually kind of shrunk in the motion. Um, so I've left an extra inch on the side and just a wee bit more at these. Maybe an inch and a half at each side, two inches. Um, and I'm going to use fabric glue. I'm going to use this fabric glue to see how it works. I have already glued one of the edges down the seams. I've ironed this to exactly the measurements I want. Um, 
and I've ironed these three seams down as you can see this one pulled it down so I've ironed that and this one is already I tried gluing it and it's taken about an hour and it's just dry so so far it looks quite good um, so I'm going to glue the, the edge of the other one down remember you want to have your edges out because you're going to turn this out the other way when you're finished so I am just going to glue it on these on the very edge you don't need a lot because it will see, it'll come right through your material Let's try and keep it close to your edge And just press it down. It's better if you iron and then your seams will lie flatter. And then you can see I've ironed the seams here as well, put an edge on it. And that's how you're going to iron your, put your glue on the pieces that you're going to use. So, once you've got these lying flat to the size you want, I'm going to, because I have just glued this one, I'm going to put this in beside so that if it goes through it doesn't go through on my cloth. This is just a bit of scrap material I have. Um, I just thought I would show you how to do the, the glue. So really, you want to just lift your edge and put it on your edge. I would make this a tiny bit bigger than your cushion cover because you don't want it to have as much pressure on it when the cushion goes on it. So I've just done two wee stripes of glue here. So you can see this. And then I'm just going to bring this back and fold it onto it. Turn it round and do the same at the other side. You can spread this out if you want, I just swapped this way. I think this glue was five five ninety nine from Hobby Cars had it for a while. So right. I'm now going to bring this glue over and because you've cut this material twice plus an extra four to five inches each side so they cross over so it's like an envelope you will basically be putting some of the glue back on the piece that you've just done. I would do it up to the edge and then when you're ready to set it down, put it on the extra piece. Now, on the back of the glue, it tells you it's washable and to leave something heavy on it for a while. So, I'm going to get a book and put it on top of it.
I'm just putting a quick book on top. It says it's washable. So, hopefully it just... I've never tried washing it before. But we'll see how this comes. I'll just leave it here for an hour to dry. And I'll let you see. Hope you enjoyed these DIYs. If you did, please share with your friends and family. I'll leave a list of what I've used in the description box. Thanks for watching. Bye.